So thank you all for you know the wonderful questions that are coming in. You know, please continue to type your questions in the chat. Our next speaker is Paul Krajewski, and Paul is the Senior Integration Engineer at Dynacare, and we'll be speaking today about API tool chains for low budget programming. And so welcome to the stage, Paul. Hello. How are you? I am doing well, thanks, how are you? Great, thank you, thank you for being here today. Great, uh, can I get started? Please do, please share your, um, your PowerPoint. Right, all right, uh, you guys can hear me all right? You can see everything? Yes, looks great, thank you. Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome to my presentation called API Toolchain for Low Budget API Programs. That is a picture of me. That is not a picture of my computer. But I am a software uh, developer, um, mainly full stack, mainly back end. Um, I played the drums. Uh, and I love APIs. I've been API designing, developing, and managing APIs for the past five or six years. And I also like IPAs. And you can get a hold of me through any of these channels, uh, except for GitHub. I don't think you can contact me through GitHub. But feel free to um, ask me any questions. I'm always checking up on this stuff. Uh, and I just, even if it's just uh, talking about APIs or IPAs or drumming, um, I'm really game for anything. So uh, let's get started. Um, when, when we refer to an API program, um, what I mean is that how we can realize um, mainly REST APIs um, through design, development, documentation, and testing. Uh, and so the approach here is really to use the open API specification as the single source of truth. Uh, and this gives us a lot of benefits. Um, for this demo, I'm going to show you how we can use the free versions of each of these tools um, in order to really accomplish at least the beginning state of, of an API program. And as I kind of illustrate here, this is an iterative process. It's, it's pretty important to, to mention because uh, an API program, building, developing APIs is not just a one and done thing, right? You're always gonna get feedback. You're always going to um, enhance based on the feedback that you get from your API developers. And in this day and age, you know, who doesn't wanna be agile? So uh, what I'm gonna do is for the majority of the presentation, I'm going to demo how you can use these tools uh, to get a jump start in your API program. So the first thing that you're gonna need is um, an account on GitHub. You're gonna need an API repository. And our approach here is we are going to um, use our GitHub repository and we're going to store the API specification in this repository alongside our code base. So you can think of GitHub as um, sort of, you know, our way of um, keeping everything in sync. And we're actually um, going to be syncing up the rest of these tools with our open API spec instance in GitHub in order to make this thing work. So once we have a repository, and this can be an empty repository, by the way, um, our, usually the first thing that we'll start with is the API design. So for those of you that are not familiar with Stoplight, Stoplight is, uh, provides a free tool called Stoplight Studio. This is uh, something you can download on your machine and uh, it really streamlines the design process uh, and makes it super easy and intuitive to create an open API specification. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. One of the options for getting started, and this is what you'll see when you first open up the tool, is uh, different ways that you can start up a, a new project. Um, for, in order to kind of sync up GitHub with our Stoplight 
Studio, we're going to want to open a Git project. And in order to do that, all we have to do is paste in the link to our GitHub repository, hit clone, and then we can get started creating our API. Um, and all we really need to do is just click on API, give it a name. We're going to want to make sure to use version 3.0. Uh, they do give you the option to use 3.1. I do not recommend using 3.1 at this point in time uh, because it's so new. A lot of the, the tooling does not yet support version 3.1, um, especially uh, Swagger Hub that we're going to be using later on does not support 3.1. So we're going to make sure that um, all of our tooling supports this 3.0. Uh, has been around long enough that the ma vast majority of the tooling supports uh, that version. I'm going to use JSON. Um, you can also use YAML. It's really just a personal preference. Uh, but for this demo, I'm just going to use JSON. And once we create the API, uh, you will notice that it gives us something to work with off the bat. So it gives us a template, and it adds in placeholder methods, models. Um, so that's the reason why I call it user APIs, because it gives us this um, sort of uh, template, which we can, um, if, if you're a new to Stoplight, it, it actually helps you to start getting to learning how to use the tool. Seasoned, uh, seasoned Stoplight users will majority of the time just start from scratch. But for the purpose of this demo, we're going to use what's already here. As you can see, it gives us this um, form-based editor. And it gives us everything we need to start making changes to our API. So we can uh, add in the different HTTP methods. We can add in uh, responses, different headers um, for posts, requests. You can add in um, the body or different requests. You can add in models uh, really easily in a few different ways. Um, but you can come here, you can add an endpoint, you can add a model, and then you can easily reference this, um, these models in the documentation here. So um, really super easy. If, if, if you've ever experienced um, editing a, a open API specification with just working with the code, you'll know how, uh, you'll appreciate how easy this is versus working with directly with the code. Uh, however, Stoplight does give you that option, which is also really nice. Uh, and additionally, it gives you some other stuff out of the box, like this uh, preview. So you can preview basically the documentation that's generated based off of the open API spec. Um, you can set up a mocking server. Um, so you can actually interact with the API design as you're building this out. And it also comes with uh, some linting rules that allow you to validate not just the syntax of JSON and YAML, um, and not just um, making sure that you're, uh, you have a valid open API spec, but it also allows you to customize your own rules. And this really comes in handy as your API program scales and you're adding more and more APIs and more teams are working on these APIs, you can add a layer of consistency across all the API designs um, in order to make your APIs more predictable and easier to use. I'm not going to go, I'm not really going to spend a lot of time doing this because we're on a, on a, a short uh, time squeeze here. Um, but I did want to show you a kind of the main feature, which is this, this form-based editor. And one thing I wanted to point out is um, that includes that is included with this template is uh, the examples that it's it provides. So along with um, already adding, like for example, a request body here, it gives you an example of that request body. And I just want to uh, call that out real quick because this is going to come in um, handy big time when we're integrating on the testing side. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, later on. So once we create our initial specification file, Stoplight will, by default, will add it um, in your documents directory if you're on a MacBook. If you're on a, a Windows machine, I'm not quite sure where it adds it in, but 
Um, these things can be modified. You can move your specification to any folder you like, and they'll still work uh, really nice with Stoplight. Um, when you first launch the, the product, it will create a Stoplight folder. And in that Stoplight folder, it will house all of your projects. Uh, when you create a project using GitHub, um, it will automate, it'll name your project based off of your GitHub username plus your GitHub repository. Um, so as you can see here, I have API, dem API days demo repository. So we're gonna CD into that one. Uh, and what it's doing here is it's creating a reference folder. And in that reference folder, that is where it is storing your open API spec, okay? And because we've already integrated uh, GitHub and Git, we can already see that you know, changes have already been made to our, our staging. Um, and so we can follow the normal, the typical development process as we're de designing this API. And again, the strategy here is to have this live alongside of our code base. Um, and that's important to note because there's also a lot of cool things that we can do to um, remove a lot of the effort um, for building out the code. Uh, for example, there's uh, a lot of open source libraries you can use to, for example, validate all requests to your APIs without having to build custom middleware. Um, so really cool stuff. If you have any questions about that, ask me at the end. Hopefully there's time. If not, um, feel free to reach out to me in those links and we can uh, go over those questions async. Um, so what I'm gonna do real quick is just um, commit my changes here. Okay. And as you can see, here's our API specification. So one of, one of the features, like I was saying before, is it gives you this cool interactive documentation. You can spin up a mock server and you can already start trying out the API even without implementing it, which is really cool. Um, on the documentation side though, the limitation with the free version of Stoplight is you do not have any collaboration features. This is a desktop version and you can also use the um, SAS version. Uh, however, in order to be able to collaborate, and let's say invite a team, invite users and kind of have a central place for people to view this documentation, um, you'll, you'll have to pay. So this is where Swagger Hub comes in as a way to provide a central place for your API documentation. So for those of you that are not familiar with Swagger Hub, Swagger Hub is a place um, that you can store your documentation. Um, it's it's kind of community-based, so there's a lot. You can, you can look up other designs and reference that for some ideas and whatnot. But for today, for the main purpose of this specific scenario is that we're gonna use this as the central place for all of our stakeholders, not just developers and not even just uh, testers, but even people that are, are not are non-technical can uh, come on here and view your documentation. And then it provides a, a platform for communicating based on that. So what we're gonna do now is create our initial API in Swagger Hub. Um, and we're just gonna keep things simple for now. Uh, just leave all this stuff blank. We want a public so all of our stakeholders can see our documentation. And so here's what we have starting out with. Uh, at first glance, it, there's not much here because it's just, um, just a couple lines in your specification. Um, so the next step is to really import and sync up our open API specification that we have just pushed to Swagger Hub. So remember, our instance of open API spec in uh, GitHub is going to be our single source of truth. Now, 
Um, Swagger Hub does provide you with an editor, so you can modify your, your open API spec using Swagger Hub. But for the purpose of this API program, we're going to defer that to our API designers who are using Stoplight, right? So here I'm an API designer. Here I am any sort of other stakeholder, maybe a potential consumer, maybe a project manager, uh, just anyone that's interested in how this API is supposed to work. Um, so the next step then is to um, import and synchronize uh, our open API PI spec, and we're gonna do that, we're gonna synchronize with GitHub. Now, Swagger Hub does include um, some integrations out of the box. Um, it is important to note, however, that only, even though you see this list here in your free version, only a few of these are available in the free version. And I will tell you what those are right now. The API auto mocking, the GitHub sync, and the webhook. All right, these are free versions. And we would be able to use this GitHub sync integration. However, we are limited to the fact that this only works um, with on-prem versions of Swagger Hub. So if we're using the SaaS version, uh, it's, just, it's just not gonna work. We're not gonna be able to push changes made in our GitHub repository to Swagger Hub. So, um, that being said, yes, you can utilize an on-prem version of Swagger Hub, but again, that's gonna be costly. That's gonna be a lot of effort and probably you're gonna have to dish out some money for some VMs or something like that. Fortunately, uh, SmartBear, the uh, company that makes Swagger Hub, also gives us uh, a CLI so we can programmatically update APIs in Swagger Hub. So we can use this tool to keep our API specifications um, from our local machine um, in sync with Swagger Hub. So let me show you how that's done real quick. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the GitHub repository for this tool. And here's the readme file. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that you can actually do um, with the uh, CLI tool. However, we're just gonna be primarily focused on the updating, the API update. It's somewhere around here. I actually have um, a snippet that I'm gonna use to demonstrate on this other screen. So uh, going back to our stoplight, um, interface. Let's say, okay, we've uh, added our initial API specification. Now we want to make some changes. Um, okay. We, for example, oh, we have forgot to add an API description. So I'm going to add an API description here. Very, um, very useful description. I know. Um, and if you go back to our, you know, Git here, we see that it's already reflected those changes. And so our normal development process, we would commit our changes, push to GitHub, and then additionally, we would push to Swagger Hub. So this would be, this is our strategy here, right? So I'm going to demonstrate how we can um, push this to Swagger Hub um, a, a little a little note about this particular command um, and actually forgot to kind of explain, you know, how you can go about installing this. It's super easy. You can use NPM, install this globally on your machine, and then you can com use commands like this. So Swagger Hub API update, you provide the path. Uh, when you want to update an API, you provide a path to the API in Swagger Hub followed by the path to your open API spec on your local machine. Uh, additionally, you can also um, change the visibility so you can make this public or private using uh, this update method. So after executing, we can go back and um, refresh the page and see that our API has been updated with our open API specification. And so stakeholders can now see the changes that are being made 
throughout the development lifecycle, right? Um, additionally, a really cool feature using Swagger Hub is the ability to add comments on each line of code in your open API specification. So this provides a very, very cool communication platform um, for your regarding or surrounding your API documentation. So there is a one little uh, caveat to this sort of method, and that is that you kind of have to remember as you're going through your typical development workflow um, that as you push to GitHub, you also have to push to Swagger Hub. Um, however, there's ways that you can streamline this and combine the two uh, commands. So you can, you can add this command to your CI CD pipeline during your build phase if you have a CI CD pipeline. If you don't, you can, um, you can combine this command with a git push command and add that as a script. And so then you can just run like a, you can name it git push, for example, which will uh, push your GitHub repository and push to Swagger Hub um, at the same time. So that way you don't have to remember to, you know, do both, um, which is further streamlines the, this, this process. Um, and I have a working example in my personal repository and I provided a link in my slide so you can uh, refer to that um, later on. So now going back to our kind of life cycle here. Uh, so we've discussed API design, API development um, and in documentation. So the last piece here is how we can uh, test our API. Um, and so in order, in order to, to really do that, we're gonna need an implementation, right? So as we're doing this, we're developing our API. Um, I have, uh, already added boilerplate code through the use of Swagger Hub's uh, code gen feature. Um, I don't recommend code gens for your productive APIs. However, they are pretty handy when it comes to spinning up a really quick API server based on your open API specifications just to get stuff working. Really good for this demo, for this use case and POCs and whatnot. Uh, and I'll show you how that's done. Um, with, with this export feature. And you can actually, you can also export um, client side code, other kinds of documentation, and then server stubs. So what I did here was um, I created a Node.js server. And really that's all you need to get started. The only thing I did, uh, the only modification I made was uh, changing the port from 8080 to to 3000. This is so we can sync everything up. So this can be synced up to what is, was uh, automatically generated in our, by stoplight in our open API spec. So if you come back here, if you notice, this gives us our localhost 3000, right? So as long as you have these things in sync, when you generate tests in Postman, you should be able to right off the bat, start testing your API. So I'm gonna show you how that looks like in Postman. And for those of you who are not familiar with Postman, Postman is a, uh, it's one of the de facto go-to tools for API developers um, to quickly test their implementation. Um, you can create requests and group them in what is referred to as Postman collections. And then of course you can pass this on to other stakeholders and other testers for them to run um, those sort of tests. We can generate tests automatically with an API specification. Um, and so we're probably running a little on, uh, on time, but I, I did wanna show you how you can easily import an API specification. So you go to file, uh, I'm sorry, you go to uh, import and then you go to code repository and this is where you can import your API specification from your repository. Uh, you can also do this with Bitbucket, by the way. So once, uh, once you hit import, if you have uh, GitHub already open and you're in the same browser, it will automatic, automatically authenticate you. And then you go back to Postman and you, then you can select the organization, the repository and the branch that you want to pull the open API spec from. 
And then once you hit continue, it will automatically uh, just, just pull that in. Uh, I've already done that previously during practice. So I'll just show you what, um, what that looks like. So here is our open API specification that was generated. And so what we can do now is generate tests based on this. All we have to do is come to the, the test uh, tab here. All right, and I'm gonna show you, we can, we can generate different kinds of tests, uh, integration tests, contract tests, or just some generic sort of tests. We'll generate a contract test. And so we'll give this a name. There are other advanced uh, configurations that you can add, but the defaults will work just fine just to get started. And once you do that, you can see um, on the right-hand side, it is automatically generated a specialized Postman collection for you. So I'll just click on one of these requests in the Postman collection to, to just give you a quick glimpse of what you can do. So because we have already added examples in our specification, remember how I showed you that we have an example here? Postman knew to add that example as a request body. So because I have my server all already running, my implementation already running, I can right away start trying this out and testing it. And Paul, sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to let you know that we're we're out of time, and so you know, I want to give you a chance to wrap up your your final points, but just wanted to give you a heads up. Awesome, cool, yeah. This is this this basically wraps up um, everything I wanted to show you. Just a, a quick, a couple of other points is that you can take this with Postman a step further and automate this testing um, a couple of different ways. If you have a CI/CD pipeline you can bake this into your, to your build phase and run these tests uh, during build using uh, the CLI tool Postman provides called Newman. Additionally, you can set up monitors that allows you to schedule um, these tests to run. Um, at, 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 it allows you to configure your own cadence to allow these tests to run whenever you want. So that gives you another sort of benefit there. Uh, okay, so going back to my slides, here are some resources. Um, I'm assuming this this is going to be recording, and we'll be sh we'll be able to share these uh, slides out uh, later on. And so, hopefully, we have time for questions. If not, um, we I can answer any questions async. Thank you so much for your time, Paul. Unfortunately, we are out of time, and so we don't have time for questions right now. However, you know, I think that, you know, please, you've provided people with ample ways to connect with you. And so, you know, we definitely encourage you to continue to network. And for folks who are here, please, you know, share your thoughts, look for Paul and, you know, ask any questions that you might have, um, you might ask of his presentation. So thank you, Paul, and hope you have a wonderful conference. Thank you, Shirley, you too. So thank you all for attending um, this afternoon's session. We now have a break and we'll return at 3.30. In the meantime, we do encourage you all to visit our partners village and you know, check out all of the various opportunities that are there, the different booths, you know, raffles, opportunities for free trials for different things, and get to network. You know, it's a great place to you know, learn about you know, different sessions and different presenters, especially if you haven't had a chance to attend some of the other stages. But we will return to stage two at 3.30, and we look forward to seeing you then.